Hi, this is Bruce, and I want to talk to you today about artificial intelligence, or AI, and I want to give you some examples, so stay to the end, where I will give you five examples of how I use artificial intelligence in my everyday job. All right, let's dive in. So what is artificial intelligence? A basic TLDR definition is a computer program that receives inputs from the user, does some computations on those inputs, and then returns the results to the user. It's basically input, processing, and output. And that's basically what a computer program does. Input, processing, and output. We'll be talking about that a few times during this discussion. So why is AI important? Earlier this year, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella gave a presentation where he divided the last four decades from 1990 to the 2020s. He said the 1990s were the era of the PC server and was a $7 trillion opportunity. The 2000s was the era of the web internet which was a $13 trillion opportunity. The 2010s was the cloud mobile era, which was a $22 trillion opportunity. And he said that the 2020s with AI is a $100 trillion opportunity. So it's, in his opinion, five times more important or bigger an opportunity for us than cloud and mobile were in the last 10 years. So let's look at it from that perspective. That's why AI is important today as a tool to help us do our jobs. There are many AI offerings from many different companies right now. I mean, we have the OpenAI Chat GPT initiative. Microsoft has their Copilot and Bing Chat Enterprise. We have Google's Bard and Alphabet. Meta has a product called Llama, Llama 2. And we have photo AI programs that do photographic AI. Microsoft Bing Create does that. Midjourney and a program called DALI. Um, which are cloud-based programs that do photo processing. So these are some of the companies that are involved in artificial intelligence right now. We're all familiar with Google since the 2000s. You know, you go on the internet, you open a browser, you type google.com, you try to uh, get the answer to a question. You type in a question, does some processing in the background, and produces output, tries to help you in your job solve problems. So. You know, we've all learned how to Google things like, you know, what was the score of the Buckeyes game last night? Or, you know, when was Jennifer Aniston born? Or what are the ingredients in a white Russian? So you type that into the search bar and Google will compute that on the back end in the cloud and compare it to indexes that it has. And then it will produce a response to try to give you the answer that's relevant for your question. But Google's just a computer program. It uses input, processing, and output. So it's in the cloud. You make sure you don't type anything private or protected into the Google search bar for privacy's sake. But Google takes the input, processes it, and gives you a list of web pages as output. So I want to build on that example of the Google processing where you have input, processing, and output. Let's take that and let's compare it to artificial intelligence where you still have input, processing, and output, but the only difference between the two models is the output on the back end of the AI model is a human persona. Instead of giving you a list of web pages and a list of sponsors, it talks to you uh, like a human being would, and it's conversational, and it can adopt a personality type, uh, one of many. It can be formal or informal or casual. You can set those uh, settings and ask it to respond in different ways and as different characters if you want. It's kind of interesting. But the difference between the two, the way I see it, is you know Google is a massive search engine against uh, index and it produces a bunch of web pages where you then have to go through each of the web pages looking for the relevant results that you're looking for. But artificial intelligence does another step beyond that and it processes the information and it processes it in a way that it, it's like a human being talking back to you in a conversation. So you get a result back and then you can tailor the results so you can follow up questions. You can say, oh, I like these results, but can you, you know, zoom in on an area of expertise or can you zoom in on a, a limited area of time or can you, can you zoom in on something specific that I'm looking for? And it will do that for you. So that's, that's the basic difference between the Google model and the artificial intelligence model in, in that we're going to be used, talking about more. So let's follow two different examples between Google and artificial intelligence. So on our first example, I'm going to be in Tokyo for four hours. Can you help me build an itinerary to see the most popular things in the shortest period of time? 
and Google, of course, takes the input, searches its indexes, and then produces a list of web pages that it thinks that are relevant to my question, and it also sends sponsored ads. So then I have to go in and out of each one of those web pages to find the things that it's talking about, and it returned back six days in Tokyo itinerary, which isn't really relevant for four hours, and the complete travel guide to Tokyo for first timers. So that puts it back on me to open that web page and scan that information and try to figure out what I think are the most important things I want to see in four hours. That's how Google would handle that. So let's follow that through the artificial intelligence line using ChatGPT specifically. I'll go into ChatGPT and I'll type the same prompt, give me a four hour itinerary for Tokyo and it does that extra step. It goes out to the internet and gleans all that information and then presents me in a a conversational format the best four-hour itinerary and then since it's a conversation I can follow up with other questions like can you make this specifically for an 11 year old boy my son's going with me so can you tailor this itinerary for an 11 year old boy so he has lots of fun when he's there in Tokyo and it, it will reply back certainly I can do that and it will modify the results and give you the results back specific to uh, traveling with an 11 year old child or you can say, forget that, can you tailor this towards architectural features and cultural significance? And then it will focus your itinerary based on those subjects. So in that way, it's more of a conversation than Google. So let's go over a second example. Can you help me make a lesson plan to help me learn Spanish? I only have four hours a day. Give me a schedule with links to free websites where I can get the most help and video lessons to take me step-by-step step from where I am now to fluently learning Spanish. So let's take that second example, let's put that into Google, and you're going to get a list of sponsored links, and you're going to get a list of websites, and you're probably going to have vendors trying to sell you software like Babbel and other uh, language learning tools. But when we put this into ChatGPT, we're going to get a different result. Let's talk about that. ChatGPT returns an itinerary based on what I asked it. It says, absolutely, Bruce, creating a structured lesson plan is a fantastic approach to learning a new language in Spanish. Given that you only have four hours per day to dedicate, you should be able to make good progress. Below is a detailed lesson plan. The plan assumes you are starting as a beginner. And it goes on and gives me uh, a lesson plan, which I could, as a conversation, continue to tweak and, and tell it, you know, I know some of the basic, let's move on. Uh, and it has links in there, so, uh, when you compare what Google did, giving me a list of links where I then have to go and get the information from each of those links going in and out of each one, hoping that it might be relevant, ChatGPT takes the information that I've asked for, processes it, and gives me the output in a conversational format, in, and it's already been processed, it's already been analyzed, and it gives it to me in the best format that I'm looking for, whether I want it in conversational or in formal uh, language which is very interesting. So that's our second example. So that covers two examples, the first example and the second example where I've asked Google to do something and I've asked ChatGPT to do something and you can see the difference between the two. Uh, next up, I'm going to just give you the five examples of how I've used ChatGPT AI specifically in the last year, some of the examples where I've found use out of ChatGPT and got it to do what I needed to do, help me in my job. When someone asks me whether AI is safe, I tell them it's as safe as Google. You have inputs, processing, and outputs. So don't enter protected private information into the inputs and you're gonna be safe. So in my first example for how I use ChatGPT at work, I wanna talk about the funny video that I did. My boss asked me to give him a list of team's accomplishments for the year so he could present them to the department. And I thought, well, how can I use AI to produce a video that would be entertaining? So I cut and pasted the list of accomplishments into ChatGPT, and then I said, please edit the above text into a funny story in the style of a fairy tale that I can use as a presentation about what's new and cool at work. Use castles, kingdoms, knights, wizards, and dragons in your funny story. And ChatGPT you know, replied, and then in a conversational format, the second question I asked was, can you turn this into a PowerPoint presentation and recommend photos for each slide, which it replied with a list. The next thing I did was I logged onto Fiverr and I hired a voice actor to do Morgan Freeman's voice and to read my script. And the final thing I did was go to Bing Create and I asked it to create the photos for me. So I typed into Bing Create 
give me a photograph of a knight in shining armor typing on a laptop in front of a server rack in a castle or a kingdom. And it generated, strangely enough, it generated those pictures for me and I was able to use those in my presentation. So that's my first example of how I use ChatGPT at work to get a list of my team's accomplishments and turn them into a funny video. My second on-the-job example was Sunil contacted me in Teams and he said, hey, Mr. PowerShell expert, I need help with the PowerShell that I'm writing. I'm writing a PowerShell program that's calling a REST API to the Workfront website and trying to download project tasks into an Excel spreadsheet. Can you help me? So while I had Sunil on the phone, I brought up ChatGPT AI and I typed into the ChatGPT Please act like a PowerShell expert programmer and generate a computer program to access the Workfront REST API to get a list of projects and then save them to an Excel spreadsheet. So ChatGPT generated a PowerShell program to do that for me and I brought up Sunil's program, compared it to the AI program, and I was immediately able to see that Sunil's program was using the incorrect REST API endpoint for Workfront. So ChatGPT knew that, and I shared that with Sunil, and he's like, oh, you're brilliant. I was like, no, dude, this is ChatGPT's AI. Come over here, let me show you what I did. So I showed him how I used ChatGPT to generate code, and it's interesting that ChatGPT knew how to get the information from Workfront without me telling it. I just said, write a program against Workfront's REST API, and it did that and gave me the information which I was able to use in my job. So that's the second example of how I used AI at work. The third example of how I use ChatGPT at work, I was looking to compare laptops. So I asked ChatGPT to compare the top five laptops as far as popularity and give me output in a table format of the price and weight because I'm sensitive to the weight of laptops and give me the URL where I can do my own research. So the third way I used ChatGPT's AI was to compare different laptops to, so that I could find the best one. And my fourth example of how I use ChatGPT at work Rick contacted me through Teams and said, hey, I need a list of Active Directory users who were created in the last 18 months. So I opened the ChatGPT prompt and I asked it to write me a PowerShell program. I entered, please act like an expert PowerShell programmer and generate a computer program to get a list of Active Directory user accounts that were created in the last 18 months. So ChatGPT generated a program and I put that in my PowerShell editor and ran it and gave the output to Rick. So I use that program, and that's another way that I use ChatGPT at work. So the fifth way that I use ChatGPT at work was very specific. I was wondering if ChatGPT could even know this answer. One of my teammates asked me, what kind of cloud group do I need to create to control access to an Exchange mailbox online? So I logged into ChatGPT and I said, please act like an Office 365 expert in Exchange Online and tell me what kind of cloud group do I need to create to assign permissions and access to an Exchange Online mailbox. And it was very interesting that it came back immediately with the correct answer. It said, certainly, Bruce, you would use a mail-enabled security group. Would you like to know how to set this up more in detail? And it was going to even give me the instructions on how to do it. So in this fifth example, I think ChatGPT was very helpful in finding a quick answer to one of my teammates' questions. So I hope this helps you to understand a little bit about more AI and how it can be used in everyday work. And these are just a few examples of how AI can be used. It can also provide technical advice, act as a language tutor, assist with planning, or generate creative writing. It can also be used to edit documents and summarize documents, which I found very helpful. In terms of tone, AI can reply in, in terms of formal, casual, or technical, and you just have to put that into the prompt that you wanted to reply in a casual tone. So that's my video on artificial intelligence. I hope you learned something uh, about what artificial intelligence is and how you might be able to use it in your everyday work to take your work to the next level. AI is a useful tool, a hundred trillion dollar opportunity, and I think that we'll be using that more and more in the future as a great tool to help us take our work to the next level. Thanks for watching.